These glittering waters have been watching the rich and powerful for centuries. The canals and crumbling palazzos are a sign of Venice's former glories. These days, the rich and powerful are movie stars. Now in its 68th year, Venice boasts the oldest film festival in the world. Some people fear that, like the beautiful city that hosts it, the Venice Film Festival has been sinking in recent years, losing out to the glitz of Cannes and the Hollywood muscle of Toronto. But this year, the organisers feel they've got it just right. Plenty of stars for the wow factor and enough serious films for the critics too. This is the eighth and final year of Marco Mueller's directorship of the festival and he wants to go out with a bang. Well, you know, I mean, a programme of 65 world premieres, it's, it's an answer in itself. Uh, produce. I mean, most of all, of course, the artists and the producers, uh, they understand that Venice is the most important platform, probably together with Cannes, uh, to put the film on, on the right path. Some of the biggest stars here this year have stepped behind the camera. Kicking off the festival is The Ides of March, a political drama directed by and starring George Clooney. And Madonna premieres her new directorial effort here too, called W.E. 65 films are in the official categories, all of them world premieres. There are two main competitions, plus plenty more films shown out of competition. And the coveted prize for the best film is the illustrious Golden Lion Award. But there are still some unconvinced by the modern city's star power. Before at the film festival, you could see that the stars were living with the people of Venice. The film festival was more in the heart of the people, rather than just being there for the press. Most cities, if you want an honest barometer of the place, you ask a taxi driver. Here, you ask a gondolier. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera.